for us, it's coming at a good time. Feel feel good about where we're at as a club as far as health wise and our mindset and the trajectory of what we're doing. And uh, but it is a buy. It's not a vacation. Uh, you know, we're still in season, so got to come back and get ready to go. All right, we'll start with Mike Chapel. Frank, how you doing? Great. How are you, Chap? Good. It, it, it seems like it, when you start the season, you, you've got these aspirations, uh, division, all that. Isn't the primary thing to be relevant in December? No a lot of teams aren't. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you want to get you want to get into December and and be one of those one of those teams that is that has a chance and. You know, ideally, we would like to be in a better position than we are, but we're thankful we're in it. We're thankful the trajectory that we're on. Do, do you kind of look at, in your guys' mind, that there have been times in the past where teams needed three or four things, help and all this. Do, do you kind of think that it's in your control? I mean, I think our mindset is, you know, we have a great opportunity. And if we take care of business week to week, and we know that, for that to happen, we got to play some good teams along the road. So assuming that if we can, if we can do what we're supposed to do, you'd like to think, you'd like to think that things would take care of themselves. Um, but ultimately you just stay focused on the one week at a time. Thanks Frank. JJ. Hey Frank, over the course of your playing career, what did you learn about how to make a buy, how to make the most of a bye week and how much is that kind of listening to your body and your mind with where you're at at that specific point in the season. Yeah, I think it's trust the players that they're going to do the right thing. Uh, don't try to, you know, I've been around, been places where, hey, let's keep them here in the building as long as we can because we can't trust them to, you know, I, I, I've, I've been around situations like that. That's not kind of how we operate here. Um, as you guys know, we trust the players. Um, we set a clear vision for what it looks, what we think the buy should look like. Um, obviously, the players have the freedom that they have to do what they want to do, but we, we have a plan. We we set a vision for what we want it to look like, where we're trying to come back, and um, so. And the goal is, like we said, the, goal, the win for the week, right? If you want to win the bye week, you you want to come back refreshed, right, and and primed and ready to go. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to have to come back from like so many people like to go on vacation. This is why this, this is why we can't look at this as a vacation because what happens when people go on vacation, they need a vacation to recover from their vacation, right? We all know that. And that can't happen. That can't happen. We have to get back in the building. And the moment we step our foot in this building, we need to be fresh and ready to go. Bob Kravitz. Hi, right, Frank. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Thanks, Bob. Um, what are some of the unique challenges that you face in uh, playing a Bill Belichick coach team? You know, Coach Belichick has always done an outstanding job of, you know, he has a reputation for being able to, uh, and he's earned the reputation for being able to uh, take away what you do best. Uh, he's done that for a lot of years. Um, he's very good at, you know, each game plan is specifically designed for what the team does. He has the flexibility to use his players and his schemes um, in order to try to take away what you do best. That, that's how he's made the reputation for being one of the greatest coaches of all time. Well, just to follow up, why, why don't all teams do that? Or is it just not that easy? I think we all are trying to do it, but we're just not all as good as big Bill Belichick. <laughs> I think he's, he's the best ever. Right. Or one of the best ever. Let's just, you know, in fairness to some other really great coaches, but he's one of the best ever at doing that. He's got a great football mind. He's done a great job of getting his guys ready. I think we all aspire to get our teams ready in that way. It's a combination of doing what you do. And then it's also a combination of, you know, understanding what your opponent's trying to do and making those two sync up together. Thanks. Kevin Bowen. Frank, you've had a couple different stints here in Indy, and when you do go out in the community, do you ever hear from Colts fans their thoughts on New England and what that game means to them? Yeah, there's no doubt you feel that, Kevin. Um, obviously, don't get out a, a whole lot in the community, especially during the season when when fans are most passionate about it. But 
um, having been here before as an assistant coach, um, you, you, you really feel how important that is to this organization and to our fans, that the history of this rivalry with New England is real, it's palpable. Um, you know, I don't want our players to get too caught up in the past. I do want them to understand um, that it is that it is a big deal here. And one thing on Ryan Kelly was, or I guess, is there any concern that Carson would have been a close contact at any point in that process? Yeah, no, no concerns. I mean, obviously all that, all that contact tracing has been done, uh, not with just with Carson, with the whole team, obviously. And we were all clear. Just a testament to really the guys and how, how good of a job our team has done. I mean, not that you can't get bit by that somewhere along the line, but our guys have done a really good job of adhering to the protocols, staying socially distant, um, the whole deal. A couple more, Mike Chappell. Frank, does Sunday give you guys a reason to have discussions on place kicking or is does one game not alter your approach on badgling? Yeah, I'm not concerned. I mean, you know, it was bound, I guess it was bound to happen that he was going to miss a kick somewhere. Um, so I'm not worried, not going to overreact to one game. All right, last one, Taylor Tannenbaum. Um, I know you're probably going to take a little bit of a break here later in the week once you guys get out of the building, the coaches, but uh, I know the Patriots play tonight. How do you watch that as a coach when it's when it's coming up? Do, do you watch it differently than you would if, if you weren't playing them ahead of time? Uh, how, yeah. how do you handle that? Yeah, I do watch it a little bit differently. I mean, you, you don't see a whole lot from the television copy from what we're used to seeing, but um, you are looking for little things. Um, you, you just look, you, you, you're always viewing it from the eye of the, of a coach who's playing that team and looking for personnel things, uh, you know, just looking for little odds and ends things that you might not see from a, the all 22 copy. Um, so yeah, you, you do look at it a little different. You don't allow yourself so much to look at it and just kind of sit back and relax. You're actually studying what they're doing and trying to find something that can help you to prepare. And, and real quickly, I know you, you got a couple of game balls in the last couple of weeks. Where do they go? Do you, do you put them in your house? I know a lot of the guys do, but I, I know you don't get them every week, but. No, it's, it's, it's rare. And, and yeah, always appreciative when the guys do that. It's never, never expected. And, and you know how, as coaches, we always feel like, hey, we want to deflect that because it's about the players and what they do. But they mean a lot. They mean a lot to us as coaches. And so I uh, really treasure those. Um, they either go in my office or at my home, in my, in my office at home.